All right, let's see what happens here. This is kind of a new test, so I am streaming and recording at the same time. Uh, this will end up on YouTube uh, later. Actually, basically once the stream's done, I'm gonna upload the files, but I wanted to try out using Twitch, see how it worked, just starting with an unboxing for Aeons and War Eternal. I think this is going to be the next game that I get to the table. Uh, it's not a campaign style game, so it'll be a one shot then uh, for the game, maybe two shot, depending on how it goes, depending on how uh, I see this working. Um, I'm assuming that this is streaming right now, so we'll see what happens. Uh, my name is Petter. I run the Malts and Meeples channel here on Twitch, as well as Malts and Meeples on YouTube. If you go over to YouTube, you can find a full play of Pandemic Legacy Season 1 that I just wrapped up. I'll also quickly apologize for the mowing noise in the background. It's a nice summer night, uh, neighbors mowing. But let's go to the table and see Aeons and War Eternal. Start with the back here. So if you're not familiar with Aeons and it's a one to four player game, takes about 60 minutes, they say 14 plus, and Aeons and is a deck building game, but it's a unique deck building game in the fact that most deck builders you shuffle your deck and then grab your hand, play through the deck, shuffle again, grab another hand, play through the deck, grabbing hands as you go. In this one, there is no shuffling. As you put the cards into the discard pile, they go in in the order that you selected. So you can set up combinations, set up hands, uh, put cards together that you would want together, if it's, it's possible for you to have a hand that is fully money one time, that's probably a good setup because that means the next turn you're going to get uh, different cards. In Aeons and you are fighting against one of the giant monsters. We'll lift off the lid here, start getting into it, so you can see what's in the deck, or in the box. So in the box we have our rule sheet, but also as useful we have this setup before the first game. This is actually pretty cool. I wish more games in a lot of ways had it. Having one of these things that really teaches you the game, teaches you the setup for the game, without having to necessarily go through this full rule book. Now this rule book actually is pretty well written. I've read through it once already. When I do an unboxing, it could be that I have already unboxed some things, such as this, where I've already punched out the damage tokens. These crystals. I'm not super impressed by these crystals here. Maybe this one would be better to show them off on. Mainly because they're not centered. We have these guys. Same issue as the other ones, not centered. This is another unique feature of uh, focuses, maybe. Of Aeon's End, in that you have your characters, and your characters have numbered positions versus uh, having this particular turn order. So in a two-player game, you have the chance that you'll have multiple character or your character activate a couple times in a row. Some more pieces. Crystalless pieces again, not squared up, which bugs me a little bit. Won't lie. 
some larger health amounts. Then we have here what are known as breaches. So these tiles basically are um, your ability to cast spells, your ability to do damage to the big bad guy. And we'll show off some of the big bad guys here in a second. But uh, if you open up a breach, that allows you to cast a spell from there. So each character always starts with a uh, level one breach. Let's try and use this one. Eh. But for example, the level two breach here is not open. So you can look at this and it has a starting point as for how you rotate it and I forget exactly I have to look it up to see precisely how it works but basically you rotate you rotate you rotate and then eventually you can get to this side which allows you here let's try it up here again to open it for two but you can also you can see along the side I can open it for five or I can focus it for two and so on so it allows it it is a cost to get more breaches open and you have up to four breaches and so you can see how the numbers are not necessarily the same all the way around and some breaches are harder to open but the ones that are harder to open you also get an advantage plus one damage for each spell cast out of there so that will be interesting to experiment with and see how that works we have some foam to split up your decks as you go and we have a whole bunch of decks of cards A, B, and C here and if we remember on our quick start sheet which might not have been the easiest thing to see it tells us at a certain point in time use A use B use C and so now you're going to be able to set up your game faster so I'm actually not going to break open these A, B, and C ones but these don't have any letters to them and are I believe other cards and other monsters uh, that we can buy or go up against so let's open up one of these guys and just kind of see what the cards in here look like. So you can see here we have a cost in the top corner and some abilities for the card as well as we have four of those five of these and so these are relic cards that you can't cast makes sense they're relic not a spell but then we also do have spell cards like so costs four three damage and allows you to 
manipulate the uh, the deck, uh, basically the turn order deck, which is really interesting. Or, for example, this one costs six, conjure the lost, deal five damage. You may destroy this card. That's what it means when it says you may destroy this. If you do, Grave Holt gains four life. So I guess that's one thing I didn't talk about. We are defending, and then we have a little spinner here for it, the town of Grave Holt from a monster. Our goal is to kill the monster or outlast it before Grave Holt dies. And I believe before we have all our characters die. I'm just looking through this one, we're going to put this one aside and open up another one of these. Let's do this deck. So the reason I'm opening up a few is I know that there's a couple more types of cards that we'll probably want to glance at. And especially with the deck building cards, it's not a big deal if you see them since you'll uh, yeah, be able to use them. So this is your money for the game. This actually is a zero cost money. So if you have two life or less, destroy this card. Otherwise gain three money gain one charge, and suffer two damage. So it's pretty good, but it has a limited time for it. And there are a few different zero-cost cards that I'm assuming go into different characters' decks. The main money, though, is going to look more like this. Zero-cost still. A crystal. Gain a buck. Or, and these are the basic spells. Zero cost, deal of damage. These are going to be the things that make up people's uh, decks, basically. Or, uh, starting decks, I should say. Or we have here what is Breach Ore, so this one costs four to buy, it gains you two money, or it allows you to focus a closed breach with the lowest focus cost. So that goes back to these tiles. You can see that Enduring is focus, so as long as you're, you have something that you still can focus, you can turn, 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 and then Flip. And there are a whole bunch more uh, gems available in here of different types and some more relics. Ugh. Sorry, that was out of frame the whole time. Good job, me. Finally, we have one deck left to open here. And this one I think is focused more on maybe more on the monsters or it might be split up between a couple different things. So let's get this open and see what this is in here. <laughs> so we have some uh, sorry powers that the bad guys can do. We have ah uh, this is backwards attacks the bad guys can do and. We have some bad guys. So the bad guy 
the villain you're going up against, the monster, has their own deck that you have to go through and deal with. We also have these cards say randomizer at the bottom. So when you're creating your combination of cards to play with, you can use a randomizer to determine what cards are in the marketplace by shuffling up this deck and going with it. So we're going to slide this off to the side. Oops. Let's find the front there. So, we can also just do stuff like this. To keep our space. And then it also comes with these larger size cards. And these have a nice little ability in that these are dividers for this section over here. So I can sort the cards by their different types and go with it from there and be able to find stuff easily. So, the final thing we have to look at are, well, two final things I should say. We have the monster, big bad, that you're going up against, as well as our characters. So, the big bads have a big board. You can see what they look like. Their health, that's a 70. Um, unleash. It's an ability that happens once in a while. Additional rules for them. And so that's an additional way you can lose. And then on the back, we have the artwork again, just uh, sepia tone. Setup directions. And some text for it. And I'll just show off pictures of the other ones. This really sucks for our town. This one's very different in that it must have some worse abilities because if you look at it, its health is 35. Where the other ones are 70, 70, and 1. It can't be dealt damage, oh boy. And it has acolytes out there. <laughs> that sounds like an interesting combination. I'm just gonna start to return some stuff as we get ready to look at, sorry, the last one. So here, we have some of our characters. We have a Breach Mage Assassin, and you can see over here we have our first uh, Breach, and our second Breach that are open, and then it tells us here how to align our other Breaches. Breach Mage Advisor. We don't actually, it looks like we don't actually even have a Breach in the first spot that have a second, third, and fourth. Then there are some here, like Ulgamor, who has only one unlocked as well, and it's in the first spot, but they can unlock an initial one. I should point out down here at the bottom, this is what you use some of the crystals for, and as you fill them up, I believe each of these costs two to buy on your turn, you can trigger whatever this ability is for them. We also have another interesting thing. Let me just pull this up closer. We have a starting hand and a starting deck, and this is the order you put those cards in. So you know, always know what you're going to start with. Sorry, that's fairly reflective. 
and that changes from person to person. Which is, I think, very interesting and makes the game pretty unique that way. And you can see there are a lot of different characters to play with. And I believe that takes us back to the beginning. And when we play with it, um, I believe for solo rules, solo play, you are your own ally. So basically it allows you to add in a few extra things or allows you to trigger ally abilities on yourself as well as you can play it with multiple uh, sorry multiple mages that hurt my brain failed me for a second there or you can do it true solo where you'd be playing with the single one and if you're playing two, true solo um, I believe you can start with either 12 or 15 life but if we flip back in this book to somewhere in here Characters start with ten life, so you're going to have an addition. You're going to have additional life for your character, which is going to help keep them alive longer. And as I pack this back up, that was Aeon's End, The War Eternal, from Indie Boards and Cards game by Kevin Riley, and it's going to be the next one that I play. Um, I'll probably do a single game of it. It's possible that I'll do multiple games of it. We'll have to see. But I hope that that was interesting, and I'm going to try and do more separate unboxing videos. I know with Pandemic Legacy, I did it and I played the first game, but that was a lot of information and made a fairly long video. I want to kind of keep it a little bit shorter and a little bit more focused. Hopefully that was enjoyable. Uh, if you are liking this, please consider subscribing, following uh, me on Twitch, or subscribing on YouTube. With that, I will see you next time. I don't have a beer with me tonight. I had a beer while I was grilling, and I decided I was tired and probably would fall asleep if I had another beer. Anyways, that's what I have for today, so I'll see you next time, and with my invisible uh, beer, bottoms up.